Yo, Adam Saxon with Gyna Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some awesome Power BI updates, a way that you can do data driven subscriptions, and some crazy DAX. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. LC Mark is looking at a way that you can take advantage of DAX Fusion to improve performance inside of your reports from a DAX perspective. If you're not familiar with DAX Fusion, he's got a link in his blog to an older blog that he made talking about what DAX Fusion is. But this blog is going through just a way that if you have a similar column, maybe it's broken out by category, this is a way you can really improve performance, especially for direct query, which when you're using direct query, every little bit of performance improvement you can get is worth it. Bill's always got some crazy things you can do with DAX and he calls out at the bottom of this blog about you may have spotted a weird thing that he did and he's going to have a blog later on that talks that goes into like what that syntax is. I know when Patrick and I looked at it, it was like, whoa, that must like we have an assumption of what that's doing, but we're really looking forward to Phil's blog explaining what that really is. So if you want to do some more crazy DAX, check out this blog post links down below in the description. John Weiss got a blog looking at how you can actually create data driven subscriptions with Power BI reports. So this is not paginated reports. This is Power BI reports. And this is a combination of a couple of things. He's using a SharePoint list to actually describe or create what that list is. So the actual subscriptions that you want to create. We've obviously got our report inside of an app workspace inside of Power BI. And then he's using the export to API with Power Automate to actually generate those PDF outputs or whatever format you want that's supported with Power BI reports. And he calls out that one of the beauties of this is that it gives you a lot of flexibility of how you want to actually handle this, where the output of those files go, and just control over the process. This is a great use of existing tools on the Microsoft stack, but one thing to call out, this does require that your report be in a Power BI premium workspace in order to use that export to API. But if you've got all of those things, check out this blog post. It may be a great way for you to establish those data driven subscriptions inside of your organization. Links down below in the description, including links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Dark mode is now available inside of Power BI. Woohoo! Not for Power BI desktop, though. If you want Power BI desktop, be sure to go vote up that ideas item. I'll have a link for that down below. But this is dark mode from a Power BI mobile app perspective on iOS, which is still cool. I like it. Anything I can get dark mode on, I will take. It's one of those little things and I'm eagerly awaiting that to come for Power BI desktop as well. So make sure you've updated to the latest mobile app if you're on iOS and you can go enable dark mode. Power BI data protection went generally available and also got some cool improvements as well. I'm actually curious. Let me know in the comments below if you're actually using data protection and the associated items along with those sensitivity labels. One of the cool things that came with it is this capability of inheritance. So if I already have a data set with a sensitivity level and I go to create a new report, it's going to inherit that sensitivity level, which is very key. Also, if you create an Excel file and you're linking to that Power BI data set, the Excel file will also inherit that sensitivity label, which is also great. This blog post also calls out some things that were updated with the cloud app security. So these are all things that you can take advantage of from a security perspective. If you're not using it, I would definitely recommend you check it out and see if it works for your organization. Links down below. We got the June 2020 release of Power BI Desktop. And as always, there are awesome things that are inside every monthly release. This one came with some cool updates for mobile layout. If you're using mobile layouts, there was a whole new mobile emulator that was enabled inside of Power BI Desktop and just general improvements for working with those mobile layouts. So now you can have like a background image and put a visual on top of that. Before that was not impossible, but it was hard to do. There were also several announcements of general availability. So the modern ribbon, the hierarchy slicer, automatic page refresh, all of these things are now generally available and out of preview. Probably the biggest thing I saw in this release that really excited me is that when you connect to a live connection, so either you know, Azure Analysis Services or 
analysis services on premises or a Power BI data set, the model view will now be enabled for that. So you can actually see the model that you're connected to before that was never available. And so you just had to kind of know what those relationships were and everything. So, but now you can see that inside a Power BI desktop. It is a preview feature, but it's on by default. You can optionally turn it off if you want. And then the blog also mentioned just general updates for the model view itself. A lot of it had to do with hierarchies and how you work with hierarchies, but also on a given table, now you can use any corner to shape and drag and enlarge, reduce the, the actual table layout. So that's pretty cool as well. This live connect model view though is a step towards the actual composite model updates where we'll be able to mash it up with other things. That's not there today, but this is one of those baby steps to get us there. So I'm very excited about it. Make sure you've updated to the latest RBI desktop release. If you're on Windows 10 and you can use the Microsoft Store, install from there so it gets automatically updated for you. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I wanna know, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.